Good evening and welcome to the U.S. Senate debate 2018 with Republican Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith and Democrat Secretary Mike Espy. We have three panelists with us tonight, beginning, beginning that is, with <coughs> Jeff Pender, who is with the Clarion Ledger and WLBT Zone, Courtney Ann Jackson, and with the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal, Caleb Bedillion. Now, the candidates have chosen at random the order for the opening and closing statements tonight and who will take the first question. They will have two minutes to answer each question and one minute for rebuttal. Candidates may also have an additional 30 seconds to respond to some of the questions tonight. The League of Women Voters will take care of our time tonight. They will be keeping track of our time. And we want to get right to our opening statements, which will be followed by the first question tonight. We begin with Secretary Espy. Well, thank you, Maggie. To our uh, host, the Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation, to, uh, to Maggie Wade, to our panelists, to our timekeepers, to Senator Hyde Smith, thank you for agreeing to debate. And to the uh, audience listening in and looking, I thank you for uh, doing that. And also, uh, I thank you for participating in this debate. And, and I appreciate you. And we've got Thanksgiving coming up. And, and uh, we hope that uh, you share it with your family to enjoy the lowest bl uh, bounty. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to discuss our specific approach to the issues. And I'll just tell you right off the bat, what is my approach? My approach is Mississippi first. That means that Mississippi over party, Mississippi over person, I don't care how powerful that person might be. It means Mississippi each and every time. It means that I'm not gonna let anybody in the federal government run over you. When it gets to the issues, Mississippi first means that if you're a senior and uh, you think that your social security and Medicaid might be threatened, if you're a student, uh, brain drain, issues, leaving Mississippi, we want you to stay here. Uh, if you are someone who is ill or infirmed, we want to make sure that, uh, that you have prescription drug costs that are going down. And if you have a pre-existing condition, we just want to make sure that you're not at risk of loss for that. In this race, everyone is talking about uh, qualifications. I'm the most qualified candidate in this race. I've, um, I ran for Congress and served uh, uh, three terms, four times. I served as Secretary of Agriculture. They asked about accessibility and independence. I'm accessible because I don't judge anyone. I just work with everyone, irrespective of race, or party, or gender. I'm going to serve you. I'm not going to judge you. And I'll be independent. Independent means you're not going to hear me say that I'm voting for anyone 100% of the time. I'm for you every percent of the time. So I'm here. And thank you very thank much. Thank you. Yes. Senator. Hyde Smith. Thank you for watching and listening to this debate tonight, and thank you, Farm Bureau, for putting this debate on. There's two other big events that will be coming up next week. On Monday night, the night before the election on November the 26th, the President of the United States is coming to Mississippi to campaign on my behalf. We will start out in Tupelo at 5 o'clock, and then at 8 o'clock, we'll be on the beautiful Gulf Coast. I encourage you right now to go online at Donald J. Trump dot com and get those free tickets. Tonight you're going to hear the clear differences between me and my opponent on the most important issues that are facing our country right now. Throughout this campaign I've always said it's not about me, it is about you, the people of Mississippi, the things that are important to you. Lower taxes, less regulations, supporting our military and our veterans, protecting our unborn children supporting our Second Amendment rights. You know, our conservative values, that's what's going to be on the ballot next Tuesday. And tonight, you're going to hear from all of these issues from two clear, different opinions from two different opponents. I think you're going to hear about 750,000 reasons why my opponent is too liberal for Mississippi. <laughs> and throughout my record of public service, I've shown you one big reason to support me. That is because I've worked very hard for you you know I will stand up and protect our conservative values. I just ask everyone to get out and vote on November the 22nd. And you know, other than being the wife of Mike Smith, the mother of Anna Michael Smith, this has been the highest honor of my life as serving as your U.S. Senator. I hope you continue to allow me that privilege of serving you. Now our first question comes from Jeff Pender, and it goes to Senator Heitzman. 
Good evening, Senator Hyde Smith. Uh, in a state that relies heavily on agricultural exports, uh, how long can Mississippi farmers economically cope with tariffs? And would there be a point where you would try to step in to protect farmers and maybe ask the president to reconsider? You know, as Commissioner of Agriculture and Commerce of this great state, I am well aware of all of the challenges there. I have met with the president and I proudly support him in negotiating these trades. All the Mississippi farmers want is a fair deal. And I'm excited that the president has stepped up to renegotiate these deals so farmers can have a fair trade level of playing field that we have the advantage of and not the imbalance of every other country having a bigger advantage than we do. Rebuttal, Secretary Espy. Yes, this is a wrong-headed policy by this administration. This is something that I wrote about back in March in an article, you know, called Be Careful What You Ask For. This uh, president actually tried to curry favor with Ohio and Pennsylvania by putting tariffs on aluminum and steel without looking at the repercussions on soybean farmers. I've talked to soybean farmers in Mississippi. If they didn't forward contract, they're in trouble. We have some that have soybeans now uh, just in reserve because they can't be sold because the, 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 it's too low, the prices are too low, and so uh, they, they have the soybeans in reserve, and there's a, there's a tenure low in their income. So I think this is a wrong-headed policy. Uh, we warned about it before. You have to have a senator who can see around the corner, who has a vision, and who is not tied 100% to a president who made a very poor decision. Good evening, Secretary Espy. Thank How you. can we balance the call for immigration reform and border security with the needs of farmers who rely heavily on migrant workers as a consistent supplement to their labor force? Well, that, that's, a, that's a really good question. I think that we have to have a strong immigration policy. We have to get secure borders, but the policy must also be humane. By that I mean, I don't, believe, I don't like open borders. I think immigration ought to be legal. And a legal aspect of immigration is asylum. So that's one thing that can happen and so if you have an asylum petition, we don't want to snatch your children from you, but that asylum uh, petition can be administrated uh, to, to conclusion. The farmers also, they also need migrant workers, which they can have an exception to come in to work seasonally. So that's an exception to immigration. So if they have a purpose for coming in, a valid purpose for coming in, then I think they ought to be able to do that. But anyone else cannot come at night the borders uh, should be secure, but the farmers ought to get what they need to bring in the crop. Senator. Migration workers are very important to American farmers. We see that every day. I think we should definitely build that wall. I think we have to secure our borders. We can't have people storming our borders. You know, I have been in the Rio Grande River with a bulletproof vest on, with machine guns all the way around me. I've talked to these farmers down there. <coughs> I know what the severity it is of the drug cartels running that border. There is illegal access, and we certainly cannot circumvent that. Senator Hyde-Smith, here in Mississippi and across the country, unemployment is low, but workers' paychecks aren't going up. Do you think wage stagnation is a problem, and do you support any policies that you believe can address this problem? You know, I am so excited in supporting President Trump's tax cuts. When the corporate tax rate went from 35% to 21%, that changed this country, that changed this state. Our economy is better than it has been in decades. We have the lowest unemployment rate we have had in a long time. With these tax cuts, our businesses, they have had the opportunity to prosper, to grow, to increase wages, to improve benefits. Mississippi is enjoying President Trump's tax cuts, and they are certainly working here in this state. Secretary Espy. I disagree with that. You asked about wages. Wages have fallen in Mississippi about 2.2 percent from 2017 to 2018. So yes, we have a tax bill that was aimed at the top income bracket, but the benefits have not trickled down to those in the middle level or even lower. You know, I'm from, I'm from Yazoo City and we have a, a large family, seven children, and I like to think about it in very simple terms. When my mother made uh, jam and put it in the jelly jar, when we went to the pantry, she put it on the middle shelf where everyone can reach. My brother, six foot two, and Mike, who was the, the, the lower guy. So 
that's, that's how I think about tax policy. You should, you should provide a tax policy that provides benefits from those in the middle, then everyone can benefit. And our next question is from Jeff. Secretary Espy, uh, do you support a single payer health care system and can you explain why or why not? No, uh, not really, and, and I don't care what you call it, but I, I support a health care system that's affordable and accessible. Now, if you look at what we have now, the Affordable Health Care Act, there are a lot of good parts of that I think that we, can, uh, that we should keep. The first one is making sure that there's coverage for pre-existing conditions. That is just absolute. And I think that's the number one issue here in Mississippi. The other one is to make sure that students can remain on their parent policies to age 26. The other is just making sure that women aren't treated differently than men. Uh, right now, uh, across America, most women are, are, are discriminated in the sense that, that, uh, that uh, uh, they are charged more for the same treatment than, than men. And then in the ACA, there was this issue about Medicaid reimbursement for small rural hospitals. And our state did not accept that, whereas most other states did. And that's why now we have in all these rural hospitals in Mississippi closing, because we did not accept the Medicaid expansion money, and we have uncompensated care. So when you go to the hospital now, uh, unfortunately, the prescription drug costs are rising, the health care costs are rising. As we just discussed, the wages are not rising. And so you have something left on the table that the hospital used to be able to cover with Medicaid reimbursements. It's no longer there. And so if I'm the senator, I'm going to make sure that, uh, that we have Medicaid reimbursements. And uh, I've seen Senator Hyde Smith's vote on prison conditions. There was a bill in the Senate before the recess to make sure that the insurance companies uh, uh, told them that they could not deny coverage for policies for pre-existing conditions, and she voted against it. If I'm the senator, I'm going to vote for it. Senator, who voted? I want to repeal Obamacare. I'm for free market solutions. I have never voted for a bill that excluded pre-existing conditions. You know, I don't know anyone who doesn't have a pre-existing condition. Everything that we will support, I assure you, will include pre-existence conditions. Obama, Obamacare, which has been a disaster for health care, ruined rural America. My opponent supports that. He also supports a taxpayer-funded health care policy for illegal aliens that are not even American citizens. Mississippi cannot afford that, and I would never support anything like that. Mr. Espy, did you want additional response? Yeah, because that's not exactly right. She's looking at a vote that I made 20 years ago, and that's all right. The thing about that particular bill is that uh, all hospitals must give emergency care to whoever comes in whether they're illegal aliens or not, they must do it. So my vote in that respect was just making sure that the Medicaid reimbursements, as I said before, would be provided for rural hospitals when they gave the care to the individual. Would you want them to come in and be responsible? And I'm sorry, Mr. Espy. I'm sorry, Colin. Courtney Ann Jackson has the next question. Senator Hyde-Smith, the video in which you reference a public hanging has received national criticism and attention. You have released a statement in which you say that any attempt to turn it into a negative connotation is ridiculous. What is the positive connotation, and are you willing to explain and or apologize tonight? You know, at a campaign event, I had the opportunity to visit with a supporter who has a big piece of my heart. See, his mother and dad both died when he had of cancer when he was in high school. So, so to express my deep regard and my sincere commitment to this young man, I used a phrase. I told him that I would fight a circle saw for him. Well, obviously, I would not stick my arm in a circle saw, nor did any of my comments ever mean that I would enjoy any type of capital punishment sitting there witnessing this. You know, for anyone that was offended for my, by my comments, I certainly apologize. There was no ill will, no intent whatsoever in my statements. In nearly 20 years of service, of being your state senator, your commissioner of agriculture, and your U.S. senator, I have worked with all Mississippians. It didn't matter their skin color type, their age, or their income. That's my record. There has never been 
anything, not one thing in my background to ever <coughs> indicate I had ill will toward anyone. I've never been hurtful to anyone. I've always tried to help everyone. I also recognize that this comment was twisted and it was turned into a weapon to be used against me, a political weapon used for nothing but personal and political gain by my opponent. That's the type of politics Mississippians are sick and tired of. Mr. Espy, Secretary Espy. Well, no one twisted your comments because the comments were live. Uh, you know, it came out of your mouth. And uh, I don't know what's in your heart, but we all know what came out of your mouth. And it went viral, you know, within the first three minutes around the world. And so it's caused our state harm. It's given our state another black eye that we don't need. It's just rejuvenated the old stereotypes, you know, that we don't need anymore. And we have companies like Walmart that, that wrote you today and told you that uh, your comments did not reflect the values of that company. Would you like rebuttal? I've Senator. never intended any ill will toward anyone with any of my comments. It was never there. My comments were taken and twisted and used as a political weapon against me by my opponent. And that is just wrong. It is unfortunate. And that's the type of politics Mississippians are tired of. Caleb, you have our next question. Secretary Espy. Yes. You resigned your cabinet post and were later criminally charged over allegations that you accepted improper gifts. A, a jury found you not guilty of any criminal wrongdoing, but do you regret anything you did and do you think it's appropriate for cabinet officials to accept gifts from the private industries those officials help create policy for? The allegations against me were unfair. And I said in the very beginning that, that these things are not true. And we went to a four-year investigation, and um, uh, the FBI, after four-year investigation, said that I had not given any favors to any companies that I regulated. And then during my trial, that was a four-year, that was a seven-week seven trial. You know, they spent $26 million, and I was completely exonerated by, by a jury. And then later, uh, in a Supreme Court case that's related to my case, Justice Anderson Scalia, uh, reported to be the most thoughtful, certainly the most conservative Supreme Court justice at that time, uh, ruled in a case 9 to 0 that the prosecution of Mike S. was overwrought and was de minimis and it should not have happened. Senator? You know, there's been a lot of shadows cast over my opponent. Just recently, you have read in the newspapers where he has received $750,000 from a foreign dictator who is right now this week on trial for crimes against humanity. Those crimes include murder, rape, and unspeakable things to young girls. He has taken $750,000 from this. I don't know how many Mississippians can really relate to an income that could command a $750,000 check from one person for a lobbying job. You know, if I got paid $750,000 for one 12-week job, Macedonia Baptist Church in Brookhaven, Mississippi, they would love that tithe. But there's been a lot of clouds there, and that is fact, that he was paid $750,000 foreign, from a Your foreign dictator. Your time is up. I'm sorry, Senator. Mr. Espy, or Secretary Espy, would you like to respond? You have 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Um, I've worked all over the world to lift the incomes of farmers. In this case, lift the incomes of the cocoa farmers in the Ivory Coast. I went there and took this assignment because they asked me to do it. On the contract of the Cocoa Commission of, uh, of the Ivory Coast, I found out later that this guy, the president, was a really bad guy. I resigned the contract and uh, I rescinded the last uh, fee that I was due. And then I went to the Central Intelligence Agency and after I had learned certain things and reported them. So it's all in your that report. Your time is concluded. Thank you. Let's go on with our next question. Jeff. Thank Peter. you. Senator Hyde Smith, uh, is there a balance that should be struck between Second Amendment rights and gun control in the wake of recent mass shootings? You know, this is a big difference between my opponent and I. I am a lifetime member of the NRA. I've been endorsed by the NRA. And certainly, school violence is a terrible thing. That is about mental health. That is about looking for signs prematurely for something happening and addressing them. 
but as your U.S. Senator, I will always protect your Second Amendment rights, and we can address school shootings issues with law enforcement. If they want to put guns in schools, we certainly have to work with law enforcement, but leave that up to the local school districts to make that decision. But I am very firm on my right to protect myself, my right to protect my family. You will never see me waver on a vote that attacks the Second Amendment. My opponent has already voted to attack the Second Amendment. You know, he was in Congress. It's been a quarter of a century ago that he was in Congress, but I assure you those things have not changed. When he gets there, if he were to get there, he would vote with Chuck Schumer 100% of the time, just like he did when he was there a quarter of a century ago. He is trying to come across modest, or he's trying to come across as being a moderate. He is nothing of a moderate. When it comes to Second Amendment rights, I will be the U.S. Senator to protect you. My opponent will not. Secretary Espy. Well, uh, I don't know who she's talking about. I'm, I'm staying right here. Uh, I, uh, I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in the right to own and bear arms. I own pistols and shotguns in my home, taught my wife and son how to shoot. And so, you know, in 20 years ago when I voted, I believe my record on the Second Amendment was, was pretty, pretty good, you know, 98%. Now, I will say to you that because of mass shootings and because of what's happened in the intervening years, my thinking, in a way, has evolved in this way. Number one, if you're on the no-fly list, if you can't even get on a plane, then you probably shouldn't own a gun without careful vetting. Uh, and the second way uh, is that um, is, is, uh, we need more vetting for that. And, and uh, she's 30 seconds. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Courtney Ann Jackson. This question for Secretary Espy. Yes. Mississippi educators are struggling with issues like a lack of broadband access and a teacher shortage. What is your plan to help leverage federal resources to improve Mississippi's education system, whether directly or indirectly? Well, directly, there are a number of things that we can do. Um, uh, we can make sure that the MAEP is fully funded. Now, that is certainly, you know, more of a state function. But uh, as a senator, I can make sure that we can put more Title I monies in, in the public schools. And then you talk about rural, band, uh, rural broadband funding. A lot of that money is uh, given through USDA, the Department of Agriculture, and the Rural Utility Service that uh, I used to head in a way. So there are lots of grants there, there are lots of loans there to increase capacity for broadband access in rural schools. Senator? You know, I certainly believe in school districts having local control. We need to get the federal government out of the school districts. We need to let the local people have their control over those school districts because they can make their decisions the best. We all want good educations for our children. We all support that. I don't know of anyone who does not. But the federal government has had a heavy hand in education in Mississippi public schools for way too long. We can certainly support them with our federal dollars. Broadband is very important. You know, I have enjoyed working with our farmers and ranchers also on broadband expansion, and that would help our schools as well. But I certainly say, federal government, you need to stay out of Mississippi when it comes to policies. We know better than the federal government on Common Core was a disaster. There's so many issues that we certainly need to leave at a local district and let Mississippians decide upon, put the parents and teachers and the administration in charge of that. You're watching the U.S. Senate debate 2018. We will be back after these messages. Stay with us. And we are back with more of our U.S. Senate debate 2018. And our next question will come from Caleb Bedillion. This question is for Senator Hyde-Smith. Across the country, we've seen increasingly bipartisan support for a variety of criminal justice system reforms, including alternate sentencing, reduced minimum sentencing, and there is federal legislation with bipartisan sponsors pending before the Senate on this issue. Are there any proposed criminal justice reforms that you support? I'll tell you, first of all, I want everybody to understand that I, in, I support law enforcement. I don't support criminals. I think that there is time to take a look at the reform. I understand that there are many bills out there. 
And, uh, you know, there is some common sense reforms that can be done. There's two kind of prisoners, in my opinion. One is the kind you're mad at, some young kid that did something stupid. The other is the one that you're scared of. We have a place for those that you're scared of. We can certainly take a look at revisiting these issues. And I've had so many law enforcement asking for that, but I support the law enforcement 100% of the time. You know, my opponent is not for building the wall. He is not for securing our borders. And over 90% of the heroin that comes to this country is coming from Mexico. That's a pretty clear answer of where the problem lies. When we secure that border, when we build that wall, we can take control much better than we can right now. My opponent is too liberal for Mississippi. He is too liberal for law enforcement. And we need to build the wall and secure that because so many of our problems is the reason we're locking so many people up are related to our opioid crisis. Mississippi is in the center of that opioid crisis. We need to do something about it, but only when law enforcement works hand in hand on any type of prison reform that I would look at seriously voting for to make sure that we're on the same page, that it's things that work. We have great law enforcement in Mississippi, and you know, we lead the country in many areas, such as drug court. Drug court has reduced the recidivism rate in so many counties in Mississippi. It has been so successful. We have been the poster child for many other states in Mississippi like drug court. We have a lot of our own solutions and we will continue to find that and stand firm against criminals. I'm so sorry. Criminals. Your time is up. I'm sorry. Secretary Espy. Well, she's right. I'm not for the wall. The wall is very impractical. The wall will cost $70 billion if fully built 2,000 miles on the southern border. I believe in our country. I believe in the value of our technology. Uh, we have drones. We have surveillance devices. There are any number of other ways that we can detect illegals coming across the border rather than building a wall uh, that I believe will, will never, never be built. But your question was about, um, your question was about uh, 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 reform in the prisons. Uh, I certainly, I'm aware of the, uh, the bill that you're referring to. You know, we have a, a lot of people in prison that ought to be there for violent crimes. We have also many that shouldn't be there, or shouldn't be there for 20 or 30 years because they're drug crimes, they're non-violent crimes. We ought to give them some options to leave and, uh, and go back to the society in a responsible way. Our next question comes from Jeff Pender. Secretary Espy, uh, if elected to the U.S. Senate, uh, how accessible will you be to constituents and media back home? 100 percent. You know, if I say that I'm going to do something 100 percent of the time, uh, it, it would be that. You know, the thing about me is that I don't judge anyone. You know, I just have to serve everyone. It's up to the Lord to judge between this one and that one. It's just up to me to serve everyone. So I've said in all of my speeches and in my, in my, uh, in my offices before as a member of Congress, in the sector of agriculture, I will serve you irrespective of race, irrespective of party, irrespective of gender, religion, sexual orientation, whatever it is. If it's veterans issues or, or, or health care issues, it just doesn't matter. I'm going to be there 100% of the time. I think the media serves a constitutional purpose. You know, that's in the First Amendment. That's why it's number one in the First Amendment. And I certainly believe that I will, anytime you want me at a press conference, Anytime you want me answering a question, anytime you ask me to come to the podium, I'm not going to stand back after asking me six times for an explanation or clarification. I'm going to be there the first time. Uh, you know, I thought that that was, was, was awful, what she did at that press conference the other day. And that's why I'm independent. Nobody tells me where to stand, what to say, how to speak, how to vote. That's why I believe in Mississippi First 100% of the time. Senator Hyde-Smith. I'm right now very accessible to my constituents. I have a long history in public service. I have always been accessible to my constituents. You know, my opponent voted to gut the military. When I come back and I talk to veterans about the assistance that they need, they know that I'm with them 100% of the time. My opponent also opposes just about anything Trump. If he is elected, he will vote with Chuck Schumer 100% of the time, when he was in Congress nearly a century ago, 
he voted the Democratic line straight down more than 90 percent. You know, he wants health care for illegal aliens that aren't even U.S. citizens. So when I come back to Mississippi and I talk to my constituents, they know that I'm addressing them, their needs come first for me, and I'm very proud of the record that I have with my consistent, continued communication with my local constituents. Secretary Espy, 30 seconds to respond. Yeah, Maggie. Uh, the thing is that, uh, you know, all of these attacks are all prompted because of her vote against pre-existing conditions. I mean, the Democrats had a bill there that told insurance companies that they could deny, they could not deny coverage based on pre-existing conditions, and she voted against that. And the bill failed by one vote. If that had been in the Senate, that bill would have passed, and we could all sleep at night knowing that we did not have to negotiate with the insurance companies based on coverage of the pre-existing conditions. Time. Senator Hyde-Smith, you're on record as saying that any health care plan should include coverage of pre-existing conditions. Are there any other rules of the Affordable Care Act that you do not think should be scrapped? I strongly believe in the pre-existing conditions, and that is the reason I'm going to co-sponsor right now with a bill with Senator Tom Tillis. So we know that anything we do would have to have to anybody that has a condition right now that is pre-existing. You know, Obamacare is the worst thing that happened to us. Obamacare took $100 billion out of Medicare. Look what that did to our seniors. And yes, there is many things that I believe in that I would help the health care and keep these rural hospitals from closing. First of all is end Obamacare, but free market opportunities of insurance companies being able to sell across state lines that is vital to the health care of Mississippi. That is vital for the reimbursements for the physicians that are trying to get reimbursed. Hospitals, when we have a good economy, a thriving economy, there's more people with jobs who can afford health care and have jobs that offer health care. They're not stuck with ungodly bills that people cannot afford to pay. That's the reason that I support President Trump and his tax cuts and in creating an environment that businesses can prosper. Because when we have a healthy economy, our hospitals do well too. But we cannot stand another day of Obamacare <clears throat> that takes $100 billion out of Medicare. Secretary Espy. She mentioned the bill with uh, Senator Tom Tillis from North Carolina. I've read that bill. I read it this morning. I read it thoroughly. And uh, what she said is, is really not true. You know, she supported the bill. But the bill is a sham bill because it says that, that you can, uh, they, would, they, will, they will cover individuals with pre-existing conditions, but it will not cover the pre-existing condition. So I have a pre-existing condition. I have a raspy voice. So under what she just said, this Tom Tillis bill, yeah, I can get covered. But when I have an injection in my throat, I have to fight with the insurance company to cover the practice. So what she said there was a sham. That's, that's incorrect. And what you said earlier about supporting pre existing conditions was also incorrect. Senator, would you like 30 seconds to respond? The bill that I am co sponsoring with Senator Tom Thompson, Tom Thompson from South Carolina, the reason we put that bill together is because I am so concerned about patients out there that have pre existing conditions that they cannot get coverage because of that. That needs to come to an end. <clears throat> you will never see anyone fight as hard for patients to have more affordable health care, easier access to health care, especially our veterans, but to have insurance offering that is not Obamacare. Your time is up. Caleb Bedillion, the next question. Secretary Espy, yes. when President Trump was a candidate, he discussed the need for some sort of federal infrastructure plan. Yes. Since he's taken office, <clears throat> we've seen several ideas floated, including a plan that would require state matching funds, yes. and even the idea of some sort of federal gas tax increase has been f discussed. Do you think those proposals are ideas that could help Mississippi's infrastructure, a state which struggles to maintain its roads and bridges? Yes, I read the president's infrastructure plan, but it, uh, it was faulty in this sense. Um, there was a copay. Now, I'm familiar with a copay, you know, conventional copay, where the states have a smaller copay requirement and the federal government has a larger copay requirement. 
in the one that President Trump initiated, there was an 80-20 split. And I thought, way, okay, way of what the 20 would be the local and the 80 would be the federal. But it was completely reversed. It was 80% match local and 20% match federal. Now, I've been the attorney for Madison County. I've been the attorney for Claiborne County. There's no two counties that are, that are opposite than those two counties. Neither county can afford to, to, to fix their roads and bridges and their potholes under that kind of system where you have an 80% uh, match. I think the gas, the gas uh, tax issue would be something that could be considered. Senator. You know, infrastructure is so critical in Mississippi. We're a hub for many transportations, just like the Mississippi River, the Gulf Coast, the interstates that we have. No, I would not support a gas tax. I can assure you that. I think that we have many other ways of taking care of this problem, but it must be addressed. But you know, I am concerned about bridges and roads, the safety of our travelers. I'm concerned about all Mississippians. I'm concerned about obviously those we've talked about with health care. There's a story that just broke today where my opponent discriminated against an employee because they had a child with a pre-existing health care need. And my opponent was, was taken, it was a charge against the EEOC and the individual won. And my opponent was guilty of taking advantage and not promoting an employee because of a pre-existing health care. I care about all Mississippians. Secretary Espy, your response. 30 seconds, please. I just learned about this article uh, before we came here today. I, I think it's, it's ridiculous, this one. I was Secretary of Agriculture. This was an employee. Uh, this employee had multiple lawsuits. I did not deny anyone's pre-existing condition. I never have, unlike you, and I never would. So go and read that. Uh, that's ridiculous. Jeff Pender. Senator Hyde-Smith, uh, this, this campaign cycle, like others in the past, we've seen uh, millions of dollars in negative ads come in from <laughs> independent parties. Uh, do we need campaign finance reform uh, in this country of, of any sort? Mississippi has already passed campaign finance reform. And you know, looking through that, we are so careful on absolutely everything, on documenting every campaign contribution that comes in. I think the campaign finance reforms that we had in Mississippi were good. I think that they are being, the law is being applied. You know, unlike my opponent that doesn't care that much for Mississippians evidently because of his liberal views on Mississippi, <laughs> to think that he has been hired by a foreign dictator for the to, to the tune of $750,000 to be paid. And this man, this week, is on trial for crimes against humanity. Those include murder. Those include rape. Those are including unspeakable things to small children. It is amazing that we've got somebody running for the U.S. Senate that took $750,000 from a foreign dictator off of an Ivory Coast, and who also, in his own words just then, he, there was a complaint filed against him by the EEOC that he lost because he failed to give a promotion to a gentleman that had a small little girl with a pre-existing condition. I care about Mississippians. I care about campaign finance reform. I care about everything in state government. That's the reason my name is on the ballot next Tuesday. I want to be the senator that protects your conservative values and not allow someone into Washington, D.C. in the U.S. Senate, where I've been serving for six months, that is going to vote with Chuck Schumer all of the time. We have conservative values at stake here. I plan to protect those conservative values at stake. I'm the one that has been doing that. I'm the one that has a proven track record of conservative values. We cannot let a liberal come in and roll back all the good things that we have been doing with President Your Donald time J. Is up. Trump. I'm sorry. Secretary Espy. I thought the issue was about campaign finance reform. Uh, on, this, um, on this issue again about the gentleman at USDA, I want to let you know that that was 1992. I was in the Secretary of Agriculture until 1993, 1994. So whatever case that was, was just transferred to my name as Secretary of Agriculture. And uh, that, that's ridiculous. 
to questions about campaign finance reform. Uh, you know, I am an advocate of campaign finance reform. It is so expensive to run for office. I hadn't run for office in, in quite a while. The television costs money. The placards cost money. And, uh, and I'm fortunate in that, you know, we've done pretty well, particularly since her defamatory comments that everyone knows that, that went viral. But the thing is, uh, there's an average contribution to the Mike Espy campaign of $38. So all those liberals that she's talking about, they gave me $38. Our next question comes from Courtney Ann Jackson. Secretary Espy, you've mentioned building bridges between the two parties, reaching across the aisle. Can you name a specific instance or policy where you would be ready to reach across the aisle to fellow, to fellow senators if elected? Yeah, of course. I've already done it. I was a member of Congress in 1986, and the first bill uh, that I filed that I wrote myself was called the Lower Mississippi Delta Development Act. It was an economic development act from southern Illinois to northern Louisiana. We just drew an oval around them because all of them had a, a common socioeconomic index. Uh, you know, low job skills, uh, low educational attainment, you know, uh, job losses. And so it was up to me to sell that bill. So I got the bill passed in the House of Representatives. It passed Republicans and Democrats. Then I went across the aisle to the U.S. Senate and Thad Cochran co-signed that bill for me, co-sponsored that bill and I talked to senator after senator, irrespective of party, and that bill passed. And then I went to the White House where Ronald Reagan was the president, and Ronald Reagan signed that bill, the Mike Espy written bill in 1987, the Lower Mississippi Delta Development Act. So I've got a long history of doing that. I was 31 years then. I was, I'm 64 years old now, and I'm, I'm grayer, I'm more mature, and I'll reach out even further. Senator. Absolutely, but only if it's good for Mississippians. I work across the aisle. I was known for that in the state senate in my three terms as state senator when I was there. I was known for working across the aisle with everybody. You know, we're all God's children and I treat everybody like that, but only if it's good for Mississippians. With things that matter, you bet. I would work across that aisle all day long if it's good for Mississippi. For those that are not good for Mississippis, I will not be there with them. I will oppose them and do the things that I'm supposed to do to be the U.S. Senator from the great state of Mississippi, protecting our Mississippians. Well, tonight the candidates have also chosen to ask each other a question. I will be reading those questions and I will be reading them verbatim. The first question goes to Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith from Secretary Espy. Cindy, you said that you had not cast a single vote that would allow insurers to discriminate against Mississippians with pre-existing conditions. But in October, you voted against a resolution which would have prevented insurers from selling short-term junk plans that can do just that. Did you know what you were voting for or did you lie? Absolutely, I knew what I was voting for. And that was not a single bill, that was a plan. I have never voted against anyone with pre-existing conditions to be excluded from a policy, go read the bill. It is clearly there. That is the paint, the brush that I'm trying to be, that I'm being painted with right now. Go read the bill. I have never voted for a bill that just exclusively says pre-existing conditions are not part of that and never would. That's the reason I am a co-sponsor right now with <coughs> Senator Tom Tillis to make sure that pre-existing conditions are covered. I have been like that my entire career because as I said, I don't really know anyone who doesn't have a pre-existing condition. You know, when you look at that bill, you can read it and twist it the way you want, but it clearly, clearly lets you know that I have never voted for a single bill that excludes any type of pre-existing condition. Mr. Espy, Secretary Espy, it's come to light in recent news stories that you worked as a registered foreign agent for the country Ivory Coast, and you were paid $750,000 by its dictator, who's now on trial for war crimes, including torture, rape, and murder. Will you now finally agree to give that $750,000 to a charitable organization who would improve the lives of people in war-torn countries like Ivory Coast and around the world? Well, thank you. I can finally answer this question without a 30-second uh, rebuttal. 
Uh, I've worked all over the world lifting farmer incomes uh, in Eastern Europe, in America here, and in Africa, all over Africa. This particular case was in the Ivory Coast where the cocoa farmers asked me to come over. I worked for the Ivory Coast Cocoa Commission because the cocoa prices were in a free fall because there was an election and there was fraud on both sides and uh, the, the, the price of cocoa beans going through the cellar. So they asked me to come over and take a contract where I could try to lift those prices. And then they asked me to work with this particular president that you're referring to. So I took that contract and I hired others to help me execute that contract. The thing about it, that once I got into it, I found out really how bad the guy was. I really did. And so I wrote him, I resigned, I terminated that contract, and there was a contract extension that had already been agreed to that I forfeited. And then, during the course of that contract, I learned things uh, that I thought that the intelligence services of the United States would be interested in. So I called them. I flew to Washington. I talked to the director of the Central Intelligence Agency about the things I had found, and that is a report there. And then, thirdly, I went and met with the new president, Mr. Watra, and we talked also again about the contracts, and so it's, this thing has been fully breached. That question comes because, again, the senator is obfuscating her record on pre-existing condition. What she just said is not true. She voted against a bill that would tell the insurance companies they could not, they could de they could not deny coverage for pre-existing condition. She voted against that. And the bill failed by one vote. And then this Tillis bill says that you can cover the individual, but not the pre-existing condition. What she said is not true. At this point of our debate, it's time for closing statements from each of our candidates, Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith and Secretary Espy will begin with the Senator. Thank you so much for staying tuned tonight and watching this debate. Again, next week there's two big important events coming up. We will have the President of the United States to come to Mississippi to campaign on my behalf. We're going to start off in Tupelo at 5 o'clock the Monday before the election on the 26th. We will end up on the Mississippi Gulf Coast at 8 o'clock. Right now, you can go to DonaldJTrump.com and get those tickets. Tonight, you have heard two clearly different opposite differences between me and my opponent. We have talked about the issues that this country is facing and the things that you're involved in. Throughout this campaign, I've always said, this is not about me. It is about you the Mississippians. It's about the things that you care for, the things that you believe in, like lower taxes, less government, less regulation, supporting our military and our veterans. It is about protecting our unborn children. It's about abortion. It is the things that I will stand up for and fight against. My opponent has already gone on record to be pro-abortion, abortion on demand. There is a clear difference between the two of us. You know, we have conservative values. That's what's going to be on the ballot next Tuesday, and I covet everyone's vote. I am so glad that I have the endorsement of President Donald J. Trump and the endorsement of Governor Phil Bryant, but the endorsement that's most important to me, that's most valued, would be your vote next Tuesday, November the 22nd. I ask you to go out. We have way too much at stake. This is a critical election, the most critical election in my lifetime, and it's not just because I'm on the ballot. We have to defend our conservative values. We have to defend our Second Amendment rights. We have to defend the unborn children in Mississippi. I'm the candidate that cares. I'm the candidate that has been there six months. I'm the candidate that Donald J. Trump has said, I am so Cindy, sorry, we Senator. need you back. Thank you. Your time is up. Closing statements now from Secretary Espy. Well, thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Senator Hotsmith. And thank you to all the panelists and to our viewing audience for viewing this debate tonight. Washington is broken. There's so much dysfunction, division, acrimony, cynicism, politicians turning on each other rather than to each other. We need someone to come in there with a common influence to try to lift us above all the noise and to try to reach across the chasm to bring all Mississippians of goodwill together for a common purpose. And I really believe that I can do that. I've done it all my life. I've done it as a member of Congress, elected three times, 
elected to a fourth term be before then I became Secretary of Agriculture. I ended up getting, in, the, in 1992, 95% of the black vote and 40% of, of, of the white vote. Here in this debate tonight, uh, a lot of names have been slung around, but there's one that we must mention. That's Stan Cochran. We wish him well tonight because we're all trying to, to run for the unexpired portion of his seat. Dad Cochran was a thoughtful man. Dad Cochran was a professional. Dad Cochran was very efficient. I would hope to be the kind of senator that Dad Cochran is. And then lastly, Senator Cindy Hyde Smith made thoughtless comments that harmed our state and hurt our jobs and hurt our economy. You've got companies like Walmart who today said that her, her comments did not reflect the values of their company and they do not reflect the values of our state. And we got a senator here talking about public hangings and talking about voter suppression. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going back to yesteryear. We are want to move forward. That's the kind of senator that I want to be. Not talking about harbors of the past, voter suppression and hangings. We want to talk about great things like progress. So thank you so much for allowing me to be here. The election is on the 27th. Please come out. Please vote Mike S. for Senate. I'll be the best senator you've ever had. At this time, we want to thank both of you, Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith and Secretary Mike Espy. And we also want to thank all of you for joining us tonight for the U.S. Senate Debate 2018. Thank you to our panelists, Jeff Pender with Clarion Ledger, Courtney Ann Jackson with WLBT, as well as Caleb Nadillion with The Daily Journal. And we want to remind you that the runoff election is Tuesday, November 27th. Remember, the polls open at 7 a.m. and they close at 7 p.m. We've talked about a number of issues t tonight, from education to infrastructure. We've also talked about the economy. We've talked about jobs. We've talked about the people of Mississippi, including farmers. And again, we hope that you have listened. We hope that you have enjoyed this debate. We hope you've learned from this debate. And again, we want to thank you so much for being with us this evening. Good night. Hey, NBC News viewers. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.